Behind me, we have a 1982 John Deere 4840. It's a 180 horsepower tractor. And behind the John Deere, we have an Oliver 588 plow from the mid 1980s. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be plowing for the first time. Hey, everybody, you're watching Cole the Corn Star. If you're even slightly interested in farming or just want to watch a farmer get some stuff done, you're in the right place. This morning, before we start plowing, we need to get Zach some fuel. Morning, Zach. Morning. I guess it's lunch. Yeah, it is about lunch. It's still morning. <laughs> One thing we've noticed about this tractor is it burns three times as much deaf as our other tractors that run deaf. It just it's a deaf hog. Talk about 200 gallons of diesel in her. She is good to go. Sounds like Cooper ran the ripper all night last night. We're trying to beat a rain that's supposed to be coming tomorrow. So Zach's got about five hours left on this field and then we got 12 at the next field. Then we'll, we will be done with all of the ripping. So 17 hours, we're gonna try to go nonstop. Either we're gonna get done or we're gonna get the rain, whatever comes first. Before I get too carried away, we probably better fill this pump up with fuel as well, so that way it's not running out later tonight. Yeah, yeah, it's getting down there. And while we're down here, we also need something from the combine. We gotta climb the ladder. Is it up there? Yes, we need that thing, the GPS globe. And we also need this thing, computer monitor, AKA the Ag Leader in Command 1200 monitor. Okay, this is always the hard part, getting down. There's not really a ladder to get up here. Oh boy. And we have one more fuel stop before we get started. Okay, I think we are ready to try the plow. Okay, here we go. We gotta put the GPS on the tractor, get the monitor in, and the steady steer. The beautiful thing about Ag Leader stuff is once we have all the wiring in place on the tractor, the GPS, the monitor, and everything is simply plug and play. So we pop this off the combine. GPS receiver is on. Oh. Then we just put in the monitor like so. And then since this tractor was made in the 1980s, the auto steer system is in my hand. It's that little gear right there. It actually is going to turn the steering wheel and we simply just clamp it on like that. All right, let's see what we can do. From my understanding, when it comes to a plow, we just want to make sure that it's level front to back and it's level side to side. So before I did anything, I was just gonna set it in the ground. It was gonna drive forward a little bit so I could do that adjustment and I plugged it. I. I somehow plugged a plow. The plow's got these front halters that run right in front of the shares that actually do the flipping. And somehow corn stalks are getting wedged between the coulter, the circle part, and the actual plow part. And it's just building up. And that is causing us to plug. So we're just simply gonna take off these coulters. We're plowing. Now keep in mind, I've never plowed before. I ended up running till midnight last night. I'm averaging like three acres an hour and the way the plow pulls through the ground, my auto steer cannot stay on the line because the, the plow is literally guiding the tractor. So I'm using two hands, one on the steering wheel, one I have to lift the three point every now and again because we have so much compaction, like 50 years of compaction down there the tractor will literally just spin out and stop. So I have to lift up the plow like every 10 seconds, just a little bit so that way I can get through the hard spot and keep going. So we've got like 25 acres done. We got 15 acres left to go. The rain came in and we ran out of fuel. So here we are. Then while I was running the plow, Zach was running the ripper. It sounds like Cooper switched him out at some point in the middle of the night and they've been running since. So they are out of fuel again. So we're gonna go bring them some fuel before we get started. Sounds like we got just a little bit left here on the North Farm. I'm enjoying my Greek yogurt with frozen fruit inside of it. Is that your breakfast? Uh, kind of, I had half a burrito as well. Stop 
still, I just like to take a look, make sure nothing's bent, broken, cracked, not looking right. That is the slickest metal known to mankind. Daily. Stop being mean to Roman. We burned through 750 gallons of diesel in the last 24 hours. This was full yesterday. How are you feeling? Good, how are you? I'm good. Good. Have you been running through the night? Yeah, I, got, I switched Zach at 11 o'clock last night. Ran all night. Crazy. Not the most exciting, but get it done, enjoy the weekend. Not do a thing tomorrow. That's the plan. Do you think today is the day when I finally will be vetted for a corn star hoodie? You think? It's, it's cold. I, I need another layer. Hmm? Do you think, is it today? That what, is I'm, what get, is I'm, what I'm today? gonna be vetted for a new cornstar hoodie for myself. New and the only one that I'm... Okay, we gotta get this John Deere filled up with diesel fuel. Let's go. Every time is like that. Is, is the diesel better out of here than out of there? That's got winter diesel in it, so it's got an anti-gelling agent inside of it where this does not. <laughs> you not ran out last night. That would not have been good. That's one way of doing it. That's the only way of doing it when you have camera in your hands. We have like from here down on this triangle left and then a little spot right here. If we look down on the ground, we can see we have a whole bunch of product here. Different fertilizer, we have some lime, there's phosphorus, potassium, boron, zinc. I don't know what else we got here, but there's a bunch of stuff. So what I want to do with the plow is simply take the ground and flip it completely upside down. So what's on top is going to be on the bottom, where the roots are going to grow into it and we're going to get to that fertilizer. We're doing a super heavy raid over here because we're trying to get our baseline fertility up. So just how fertile is the soil? That's what we're trying to work here. Get that number super high. Then each year, with the crops removed, we'll just put that right back on. Then we'll just maintain that level. But I want to be sure we're getting this nice and deep because we put so much fertilizer on this here. I do not want a baby plant to get into that super high concentrated amount until it's had time to break down into the soil. So we're putting it like 10 inches deep and it's turning her black. Unfortunately, we got just too much spinning going on. It's just slimy enough on top. I'm just spinning a lot more than I would like. So I am rained out. I have 10 hours of plowing left, approximately. I'm doing like three acres an hour. It's painstakingly slow, but we're making our way through it. So good looking 10 day forecast. Hopefully we'll be able to get that done over the next couple days. Since I ended up robbing this monitor out of the combine, I need to put some of the combine data onto this USB stick. So that way I can put it in the computer and then I can compare my high management stuff to my regular stuff on every single field on the computer. It, it's complicated, but I, I need that. <laughs> We got a little rain, it's just puddling up a little bit in the driveway. I think we made a good call quitting. Now, let's see what kind of dent we can make inside of the heated shop at my house. Hey Cole, I found this laying around. Can I have this hoodie? It looks like no one oh, wants it. Oh, that's right. Oh wait, what one is it? Uh, where'd you get that? It was laying over you keep there. Your, like... Just keep your paws to yourself, okay? So, I... Am I gonna get the cornstar hoodie or no? <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> to find another hoodie? Right? Before we start tearing things out of the heated shop at my house, we're down here in the main heated shop. We have this shelf. When you go into a gas station and they have the racks behind the counter that you see all the stuff hanging from, that's what this is. It used to be in a Casey's. And I have two of them, so we made this one to where it can hold all of our power tools and stuff, and then we have socket sets. It makes it a, a really nice setup. So we're gonna take the one that's in the back of the shop and it's kind of just been a catch for stuff, and we're gonna make the same thing over at the heated shop in my house. 
Okay, vamos. It smells like pizza. Oh, here we go. Just gotta clean all this stuff up. I, I'm really just tempted to throw it all away. And then buy new, and then it's faster. No, we're gonna clean it up though. Sort through it. And then we're gonna have lots of room. few weeks we've been working on getting all the lights in here, all the light switches, outlets, everything hooked up. We even got heat going. So now I think it's time we finally get this floor cleaned up so that way we can start getting some equipment and vehicles in here. I've done some cereal cleaning around the farm, like some major cleaning jobs, and I've learned a couple little tips and tricks. The one trick I've learned when you're cleaning a shop that is an absolute mess, do it in zones. So in this case right here, I'm going from the back wall to the first seam in the floor. So I cannot cross this seam until I get everything over here clean. So we got everything all organized and picked up now. So now we can move from this seam over to this seam. And we can't cross this seam onto that side until we get this side done. This one's not the most fun because I have the bowl rack and I have like seven eighths of the bench. The reason why I like doing the zones is because it does two things. The first thing is it keeps me from wandering. When we're cleaning something like this bench, there is a ton of material there. And usually you get into it about 15, 20 minutes and you're kind of excited. Then after that, it's like, oh, we have a lot left to do and it's really easy to look across the shop to something that looks so easy to pick up and then just want to jump over there and then you get doing that and then you jump to another spot and then you jump, 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 jump. And then before you know it, you've been working on it all day and you still don't have the bench cleaned. So by doing it like this, we just, we get the bench knocked out before we can move to another area. The second reason is it keeps us from moving the same item like a hundred times. So in this case, I started on the back of the building on the shelf. So I get everything already organized on the shelf and I clear some open areas. So now when we get into new spots, we find new tools and new items that we want to keep and put on the shelf. We already have the shelf organized and compartmentalized. So when we find something electrical, oh, put that on the electrical shelf. When we find something that's plumbing, oh, put that on the plumbing shelf. We already have a home for it because we already have it cleaned up. If we didn't do that first, we'd just be moving the same item around like 20 times before we finally give it a home. Okay, the bench. Here we go. I think we're at a pretty good spot with the cleanup stuff for tonight. We have our workout. We're going to be doing five pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 20 squats. We're gonna be doing that for 10 rounds. So 50 total pull-ups, 100 push-ups, 200 squats. We're gonna to try to do it in less than 30 minutes. Here we go. Whoa. There we go. Did it in just under 20 minutes. Not too bad. Day number two of cleaning the heated shop at my house. The end goal of this shop is to have the wall behind me completely clean. I don't want anything on it. We're gonna have to retract on our zone system just a little bit and that's because we have a lot of tools and items that we want to keep and I don't have 
a place for them. I'm currently in the design phase of making the bench that's gonna be inside of this shop. It's gonna have toolboxes in it so that we have drawers underneath. It's gonna have a toolbox beside it. And we're also gonna have the area where we have all of our power tools hanging somewhere behind me. But that's not here yet. So in the meantime, we have a bunch of tools laying on the floor in the shed and we have a bunch of things that we would like to keep but we don't have a home for them. I mean, just take all these random bolts and miscellaneous odds and ends items that we have here. Where do I put all these? I only have so much room on my back shelf and I wanna put stuff here that is going to be staying in the shop and it's actually going to be staying on the shelves. That way I'm not triple handling it. What do I do with these bags literally full of bolts? I could put them in the bolt rack, but I need to move the bolt rack from over here over to where the bench is going to be. Once again, I don't wanna triple handle 600 pounds worth of bolts. And what do I do with my buckets and buckets and buckets, literally buckets of wrenches and all of the sockets and everything else that look, we got another bucket of sockets. Just so that I can hear myself think a little bit, we're gonna set up the current toolboxes and shelves and stuff that we have along the wall that's going to be empty in the long run. So that way we can just get stuff off the floor, we find out what we have. Then once we get the bench and stuff made over here, then we can take all that stuff out, bring it over into a final home. And if it's not gonna fit into the final home, then it's not gonna be in the shop anymore. We're simply gonna get rid of it. But we have to come up with some strategy. Sometimes it's gonna look worse before it looks better. This is gonna be one of those cases, which I honestly is, is gonna look better because it looks pretty bad right now. <laughs> While we're working today, we are going to be listening to the robot himself, Lex Friedman and Jeff Bezos. This is the live streamer podcast, and now, dear friends, here's Jeff Bezos. So I think we're gonna be okay for traction. Underneath, we just have ample moisture for plowing. So we're gonna try to finish this out now. Well, never mind. I can't even get the plow to go into the ground. It's a little too frozen now. <laughs> I guess we're back in the shop.
Say it with me, say it with me. That looks clean, but yet it looks messy at the same time. We got rid of 94% of the trash, so now it's sitting in a position where we can just go look through the tools, we can take out what we want, and then what we don't want, we are simply just going to get rid of. While sorting all this stuff, I found all kinds of interesting things. I am extremely curious how many wrenches do we have? We got some there, we got some there, we got some there, we got a whole bunch there. I have two toolboxes in the big machine shed that are going to be located here. One's going to be underneath of the bench that we are going to build and the other one's gonna be beside it. Those are also full of wrenches so we gotta add to the list. I'm guessing we have 370 wrenches. Wait a second, we got more! So the toolbox that's gonna be located underneath of the bench, we're gonna have to visualize here for a second because we don't have anything here yet, but the one that's under the bench is going to have drawers in it. That toolbox is gonna be used for our mass tool storage. So when we have a whole bunch of pliers and vice grips, you know, like we got a whole entire thing right here, and then we also have a whole entire thing like right there. Yeah. Mass tool storage. So that's going to be located under the bench. We're going to have screwdrivers, pry bars, scrapers, pliers. We'll find stuff to fill it. Don't worry. Ooh, how could I forget? Of course, hammers. I actually found some hammers while we were doing this. It's incredible. We have more than one on the farm now. We have one construction hammer, and I think these other ones are ball peen. Little ball peen hammers. Wait a second. What's this one? Oh yes, the rock chisel hammer, whatever you want to call it. We at least found something to hit things with. <laughs> so the toolbox that goes under the bench is pretty much going to wipe out all of that toolbox, all that toolbox, and all of the everything green here, and all the stuff on the floor. Most of everything in this is simply just going to go to the back shelf, and then we'll get rid of the metal part of this, so this will be gone. And then we have the other toolbox, not the one that's underneath of the bench. Remember, imagination. We got the big, tall, standing one. The big, tall, standing one is going to house things that we'd like to use for specialty items, so electricity things just kind of the stuff you want to have easy to find that you don't have to climb up and down the ladder to get to that'll pretty much be everything in there and then like half of the stuff on this and then all kind of the odds and ends that didn't get picked up here that will also go in it toolbox under the bench standing toolbox beside the bench then we are going to have the bolt rack somewhere on top of the bench I don't know if we're gonna go over here or if we're gonna go over here with it this is the bolt rack it, it's a, a rack that is full of bolts. So getting those toolboxes in here plus the bench, we'll get rid of that. It'll get rid of this old bench. We'll rob the vise off this bench and put it on the other bench and then it will get rid of all of the stuff along this wall. And then we just got to figure out a good spot for these jugs. I really don't know where I want to put them yet. I can't put them in a cold storage because I don't want them to freeze. I don't really want them in here but I might not have a choice. Remember, our goal is we want nothing on this wall. I'm talking nothing. There should be nothing from right where I'm standing all the way to the back shelf. Completely empty is the name of the game. So that's kind of the plans of what we got going forward in the shop here. I really wanted to get done with my plowing today. We It was just too frozen on top of the ground. They're talking warm up in the forecast over the next few days. So hopefully we can still go back out in the fields and get our plowing stuff done. I really want to get this shop done as soon as possible. We're on the last little final bit because I'm sitting on a pile of wood right now that is for the house. We've already started to order some materials. Justin's gonna be starting in about two weeks working on the house and we have a ton of work to do in there, but I wanna get the shop done before we get pulled away to go help Justin on the inside of the house. So I should probably get rested so that way we have plenty of energy to get this done. That's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.